Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to the digital design lecturers. Today I am going to cover learn about Boolean algebraic function, how to express Boolean functions as truth table or using canonical forms or non-canonical forms and also I will be discussing how to apply De Morgan's theorem for multiple inputs, so more than two inputs. And we are also going to understand the more digital logic gates. Now I will continue, uh, before we start with the uh, actual class, what we have discussed in the previous lecture was multiple theorems of Boolean algebra. So now we will see one or two uh, <coughs> uh, proof, one or two proofing of those algebraic functions. So let us start, dear students, we have seen in the morning class in the previous uh, lecture that uh, multiple theorems of Boolean algebra. So now we are going to uh, prove, okay, we are going to prove one or two theorems to see whether whatever we have stated are correct or not. So here I am going to prove one of them is absorption law. So this law says that this a plus a into b is equal to a. Now let us prove this whether if I simplify this whether I am getting a or not. So to prove this I will start with this equation and then I am going to simplify this. So now according to the <coughs> distributive law, so I can write this this way. according to the distributive law, I can write it this way, I can expand this expression. Now we know that according to the idempotent uh, theorem, A plus A, okay, anything which is odd with itself is going to give us the same value and this expression will remain same. Now again if I expand this, I will be getting A into A plus A into B using distributive law. So now if I uh, again according to the idempotent theorem A into A, anything uh, added with the same value we are is going to produce the same value. So then this will be simplified this way. Now in both the terms I have a common value as A, now I can take out this and this becomes like this. Now we know that okay, according to the identity theorem anything odd with 1 will always produce the high output that is 1 output. So this I can write it this way and again according to the identity theorem this is equal to anything into 1 or anything added with 1 will be A. Okay. If you look at this then this is the proof of the theorem. I hope you understood. Like this, any given theorem, whatever the theorems we have discussed in the previous class can be uh, evaluated or can be proved with this method. Now let us see how can I prove this using the truth table. Okay. So now in this expression, how many inputs do we have? we have only two inputs A and B. Now let us construct the truth table for A and B. And I am going to call this output as Y. It looks something like this. Now I have to produce this truth table for all the possible values of A and B because there are two inputs and we know that it is going to produce 2 raised to n possibilities. For this, now if I substitute all these values in this equation, what will be the value of y? That is what we are going to write it in the output column. So if a is 0 and b is 0, this term is going to be 0, this term is going to be 0, 0 into 0, so total it is going to be 0. So that is what I am going to put it here. Similarly, when I put the values of 0 and 1, this is 0, 
a value is 0, b value is 1, it is again eventually produces the value called 0. Okay. Similarly, when I replace the values 1, 0 and 1, 1, it is going to produce 1, 1. Now, if you observe this truth table, if you look at this column and this column, are not the outputs, are not the values in this column and this column same? Yes. So, whenever we look at the truth table, if any two column produces the, if any two columns are having the same values for the given combination of the inputs, that means they are equivalent. Okay. So, in this case, I can say that y is equivalent to a. What is y? y is nothing but a plus a into b. I hope you understood. So, this is how for any given expression, this is how we can provide the proof either by simplification method, this method or by using the truth table. Now, let us look at another simple example of uh, the theorem, how to prove that. Let me take an example as identity theorem x plus 1. So, according to the theorem, it says that x plus 1, anything which is odd with 1 will always be 1. Now, let us see how can I uh, <coughs> provide, uh, how can I prove this. So, now let me start with this. So, here I am going to say this as 1 into x plus 1, okay. Because I, according to the identity theorem, we already know that anything ended with value 1 is going to produce the same value, it does not change any output. So, x plus 1 into 1 will be x plus 1 only. So, now this one again I can write it as x plus x dash according to the complement, complement theorem. Okay. So, what it is says a value and odd with its complement will always produce 1. So, this one I am going to write it this way. Now, x plus 1, this x plus 1 will remain as it is. Now, if I simplify this, okay. So, let us see what are we going to get. So, again using the uh, <coughs> theorems, so we are going to write x into x plus x into 1 this is nothing but x, x dash x then plus x dash. Okay. So, now we know that what is x into x is equal to x, what is x plus x is also x. So, I am going to for this entire term I am just going to write it as x. Then we have this x dash s x anything okay, and it with its complement will always be 0, 0 plus x dash. So, here what is left with is x plus x dash and again according to the theorem, according to the complements theorem, we know that x plus x dash, any value with its complement will always produce 1. So, hence x plus 1 will always be equal to 1. So, this is the proof of this identity theorem. Similarly, you can prove all other theorems if you want. Then again if you want to write the truth table because we have only one value x and then 1 and this is going to be y, y is nothing but x plus 1. So, because we have only one input two possibilities when there is a constant it will always remain constant for whatever the uh, uh, whatever the values for other inputs. So, we have to write it this way. So, in this case okay, x or 1, 0 or 1 produces 1, 1 or 1 produces 1. So, if you look at this, this is constant, it will always remain 1 irrespective of the value of x. So, hence x plus 1 will always be high. I hope you understood. Now, it is very difficult to cover the proof of all the uh, theorems. So, I am just keeping it for one or two. Now, let us move ahead to the 
next topic that is boolean functions boolean functions are functions which are expressed using boolean variables logical operators parenthesis and equal to sign now let us take an example f1 equal to x plus y dash z okay so these terms are called as uh, sorry these are called as terms okay we call them as terms this is the boolean equation okay this is the output variable so these are the input variables the in the boolean function the input variables can appear in any form okay here the z is appearing in its normal form but y is appearing in its complement form so the variables can appear in its form uh, normal form or in its complement form then we'll be having multiple terms odd together okay so this is one term this is another term we are odd them together we are added them together so now this boolean function can be expressed in multiple ways so this is just one of the way so this way is generally referred as non canonical method so don't worry uh, in a while i'll be discussing what do you mean by canonical method and this can also be represented in a truth table so now let us see how to draw the truth table for the given equation here when whenever we are drawing a truth table we need to first understand how many inputs are there based on the inputs will be identifying how many rows i have to draw in my truth table if i observe here we have three input variables x y and z now i have to write the truth table for uh, all the possible values of three input variables so according to the value i will be getting how many rows eight rows so let us draw the truth table for this x y z then f1 so we already know how to write the values for this truth table we are uh, we are writing the binary values equivalent to the decimal numbers so this 0 0 represents 0 Zero zero one one, then two that is zero one zero. Similarly, this goes on. So that is how we need to write the values in the truth table. This represents three. Similarly, one zero zero, which is nothing but four. One zero one five. One one zero six. One 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 seven. in the truth table containing eight rows it will have the binary representation of the numbers from 0 to 7 so now now what we have to do is replacing the values of x and y x y and z in this equation we have to find the value of f1 for all the possible combinations so if i put here 0 okay 0 plus Y value is zero. Zero dash is one. One into zero again is nothing but zero. One into zero is zero. Zero plus zero is zero. Okay. Similarly, if I have to read this, okay, if I have to read this, the same expression I can tell it in terms of words. How can I tell that? This f one will be one. Okay, the f one will be one or f one will be high when. the value of x is high or the value of y bar z is high okay by saying this okay i can easily fill this column okay so what does it say whenever x is high the output will be high so that means here wherever the x is high i can directly put the output as high and what about the other term other term y bar z okay y bar z will be high when y will be 0 z will be 1 that is y will be 0 z will be 1 okay for all other cases it will remain 
0. For any given Boolean function, okay, this is how we need to reduce or else what we can do is we can put all these values in this equation and then evaluate whatever the evaluation you are getting you can put it in the final column. So, this is the truth table realization of the given Boolean function. The same Boolean function can also be uh, realized in the form of logic gates circuit. Okay. Let us see how can we do that. Now, here we have this OR function and then we have one AND function and we also have this inverter. Okay. So, I need minimum of 3 gates. So, let us this is y and this is going to produce y dash, y dash must be anded with z then I need uh, and gate. This is nothing but y dash z and then I need to or this with the input x. So, I need a uh, or gate. This is x y z and this is going to be my function f 1. When any boolean function is given, this boolean function uh, going to represent the basic <coughs> relation between the multiple inputs and the relation between the inputs and its output and this is also helpful in uh, minimizing minimizing the number of gates and minimizing the number of um, terms in the given equation. So, this is all about the boolean function. I hope you understood for any given boolean function. Okay. So, these are the three different methods and as I said I, I mentioned one term called canonical and non-canonical forms. So, this whatever we have represented uh, the boolean function is in the form of non-canonical uh, form. But the canonical form of this I will just write it you do not worry how to write that I will ex I will explain in a while f 1 equal to the canonical form of that is x dash y dash z plus x y dash z dash plus x y dash z plus x y z dash plus x y z. So, this is the canonical form of the same given equation. Okay. So, I hope it is clear uh, about the Boolean functions. The Boolean function is nothing but a, a combination uh, expression which is a combination of the Boolean variables and the logical operations okay. and then this can be realized using the truth table and also using the logical circuits and the same boolean function can also be represented using the canonical form. So, now I hope this is clear. Now, we will discuss about how to calculate how to uh, get the complement of any given expression that is nothing but how to expand the de Morgan's theorem for uh, more than two inputs. Now, what is the de Morgan's theorem? It says A plus B the complement of A plus B is equal to A dash into V dash. Similarly, another de Morgan's theorem is a, da, a dot B total dash equal to A dash plus V dash. These theorems we have already seen in the previous lecture. Now, what happens if I have more than two inputs? So, let us see. For example, if I am trying to find the complement of A plus B plus C. Now, here to uh, what happens when I try to do this using this de Morgan's theorem, we need to assume okay, this B plus C is equals to some other 
a temporary variable. Let me call this as, let me assume x equal to b plus c. When I make this, when I call this as x, this entire expression will become a plus x the whole dash. Now, directly I can apply this de Morgan's theorem. So, this will become a plus x a dash a dash dot x dash. Now, we know that what is x? Now, let us replace this b plus c uh, in the place of x. I will be getting b plus c dash. So, again this is also a direct form. I can again write it this way b dash dot c dash. Okay. So, now if I simplify this because of the associative law, I can directly write it as this way a dash b dash c dash. Now, this is nothing but an expansion of the de Morgan's theorem. Yes, so it can be applied to two variables, it can be applied to three variables, similarly it can be applied to any number of variables. When you are trying to get the inverse, inverse or complement of any given expression, the I can directly apply the de Morgan's theorem. In a general way, I can write it this way a plus b plus c plus d the whole complement which is equal to a dash dot b dash dot c dash dot d dash and continues. That depends on how many literals, how many variables are there in this parenthesis. I hope this is clear. Similarly, uh, we can also write the general equation for the another de Morgan's theorem. This de Morgan's theorem, I am not going to write the proof because it is going to be the similar way. I am directly going to write the equation for multiple inputs using this de Morgan's theorem. A dot B dot C dot D, the whole complement which is equal to A dash plus B dash plus C dash plus D dash plus and so on. This is the expansion of de Morgan's theorem. So, whenever we have uh, to find the complement of any given Boolean expression, this is what we need to do. Now, let us see a simple example of how to find uh, the complement of a given expression using the de Morgan's theorem or using the theorem uh, what we have uh, discussed just now, the expanded de Morgan's theorem. Now, what is f1 dash? Okay. So, what is the task? This is the equation, Boolean equation. Now, I want to find the complement of this equation. So, that is I want to find f1 dash. So, here the entire expression, I would write it this way, the whole complement. Now, here we have and operation. Now, this complement uh, have to apply to the and operation. So, it will become x dash and will be changed to plus and then the another term, another component of the equation we have to apply the de Morgan's theorem. Now, again we have to simplify this. This will become x dash plus this is one term, this is one term and this is odd now it will become and. So, it will become y dash z dash the whole dash and will become or y z the whole dash. Again if we keep on simplifying this, it will be again because this is and this will become or y dash plus y double dash plus z double dash and then this is y dash plus z double dash. 
So, again we know that according to the inverse theorem this double dash is nothing but it will leads to the value y, this double dash it will lead leads the value z. So, this one I can write it this way y plus z into y dash plus z dash. Yes, the complement of f 1 would look like this, f 1 is this, the complement of f 1 is this. There is another simple method to find the complement of a given equation is just to find the dual equation of this. Okay. For any given uh, equation, how to find the dual is x and will be changed to or or will be changed to and. So, this will become or and here we have and. So, it will y dash plus z dash this will be changed to and and this will be changed to or. This is the dual of this f 1 equation. Now, what we have to do is to get the complement of that we have to invert all these variables. We have to take the complement of all these variables. So, the complement of x is x dash, the complement of y is y, y dash is y, z dash is z okay. and then the complement of y is y dash, the complement of z is z dash. If you look at this, these two equations, this one and this one are exactly same. So, this is how when any equation is given, how to get the complement of that either by using the de Morgan's theorem, the de Morgan's theorem have to apply have to be applied in multiple levels or another simplified method is find the dual of the equation and then inverse all the variables. So, there is another method of finding the complement of any given equation. So, now <coughs> we will be looking at uh, I was discussing previously in this lecture that the Boolean expression can be expressed in multiple ways non canonical method, canonical form and then using truth table right. So, we have seen using truth table we have also seen using non canonical form. Now, let us try and understand what do you mean by canonical form. So, this canonical to understand this canonical form first we need to understand few terminologies ok. So, that is we have something called min term and we also have something called max terms ok. So, we will go one by one first we will try and understand what is what do you mean by min term. So, I have kept this example purposefully so that the same example can be repeated to understand what do you mean by min term and max term ok. So, what was the equation given for this was f 1 equal to x plus y, y dash z. So, for any given equation or for any given truth table ok, how to identify the min terms? The min terms are nothing but for example, the min terms are the product terms of the given input combinations such a way that the input can be in any form ok. In the product term the input can be in any form that is it can be in a normal form or it can be in a complement form. Okay. For example, if we have two variable ok, then what are the possible values we have? Okay. So, when I have to express this okay, as a product term, product term of y and z, okay. the, uh, in this product term the y and x can be in any of its form. 
a normal form or a complementary form. So, now what is min term is? Min term is when I get the product term, okay, the product term must produce the output as 1 for the given sequence. Now, for example, what is x, y, this is also a product term. Does this produce 1 for this, these values? No, x is 0, y is 0, the output is going to be 0. Then which term will produce 1 for these two values? That is x dash, y dash. x dash is equal to 1 because x is 1, y dash is equal to 1, 1 into 1 is equal to 1. Similarly, what is the product term for this? These uh, specific values that is x dash y. What is the specific term for this? x y dash. What is the specific term for this? x y. So, these terms are called as mean terms. For any given uh, <coughs> for any given input numbers, <coughs> min term is the product, the combination uh, of the product of the given inputs in any form which produces the output as 1. Okay. So, now, so for two input variables, for two input um, equation, we will be having four min terms. For three input variables, we will be having eight min terms. Okay. So, each min term represents one row in a truth table. So, now similarly, uh, we can write the all the min terms for this truth table as well. Now, if I have a uh, equation, if I have a function, um, <coughs> let me take this as an example. I have another function called <coughs> so if I have to look at this okay is this this produces 0 what about this this also produces 0 this produces 1, this produces 1. So, now okay, I got uh, the function okay, f2 is producing this kind of output. Now, how can I represent this? How can I express this in terms of a canonical form expression? So, to get the canonical form expression for the given truth tables, I have to pick the min terms where the output is specified as 1. So, I will be picking these two and then I will be oring them. That means, I will be adding them. So, this f2 I can also write in the canonical form as 2 min terms, okay, the addition of 2 min terms x y dash plus x y. So, this is a representation of f2 in a non-canonical form and this is a representation of f2 in canonical form. Okay. So, the canonical form, this particular form is called as <coughs> sum of products. This particular method is called as sum of products. Okay. Each min term is nothing but a product term. And finally, what we are getting is sum of all of these product terms. So, that is why we call it as sum of product terms okay? or even sometimes we refer this as sum of min terms. I hope this is clear. Now, let us try and write the <coughs> min term for this and then will also represent the function in the form of canonical okay, SOP form. So, now what is the min term for this? It is x dash, y dash, z dash. So, finding the min term, writing the min term is very simple. Wherever, whichever the uh, variable is 0, there we are going to complement it. If the x value is 0, it will become x dash. 
y value is 0, y dash, z is 0, z dash. Similarly, for this x and y are 0, so we will be having complement form of x and y, z is 1, so we are not going to complement. Similarly, let me quickly write this, z dash, then x dash, y, z, then x, y dash, z dash, x, y dash, z, x, y, z dash, x, y, z. Okay, there is little problem with the alignment. Okay, I hope this is clear now. These are the min terms for three input variables. Now, how can I express this F1 using in the SOP form, okay, sum of min terms form. So, what are those min terms which are producing 1 that I need to identify. So, here we have this term. So, I am going to directly write it this term that is x dash y dash z plus this term x y dash z dash plus x y dash z plus x y z dash plus x y z. So, if you look at the truth table, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 ones in the output column and here we will be having 5 product terms. Okay. All of these are all together to get the SOP, sum of product terms. So, this is one of the canonical form uh, to express the given Boolean equation or for any given problem, if the problem is given in the in terms of truth table, then this is how we are going to identify the Boolean equation. Then we simplify this equation to reduce the number of terms and number of literals in each term to minimize the digital circuit. I hope this is clear and there is another form of this canonical form we call it as P O S that is product of sum. Okay. So, this is sum of product. So, we have products and then all of them are summed together to get this sum of a product of sum of product and then product of sum will be having some terms which are uh, multiplied together. So, thanks for watching, thanks for listening to this class and in tomorrow's lecture we will be covering this POS and <coughs> the simplification method using this canonical form. Thank you.